Hello everyone and welcome back to another Luma video. In today's video we are going to be sound designing. If you haven't seen my video about me comparing Serum to the Hydrosynth, you should go watch that. That was a really good video that I put a lot of time and effort into, so if you're curious about what this machine is, go ahead and watch that video first. I love sound design and I love the Hydrosynth, and today we're going to try to sound design things that I've never tried to sound design before, including things like an oboe. We're going to start off with an init patch here and then I'm going to bring up some acoustic samples. I want to try to make a saxophone so let's listen to some so this is what i'm looking at right here i noticed that it looks like we have like kind of a triangle wave with the first and second harmonics being accentuated here let's look at it on an eq i like to look at the harmonics first and just kind of like what the sound looks like and then i use my ears to fine tune it. This is our fundamental. It kind of has this shape like this. Our upper harmonics or our mid harmonics are louder, if not just as loud as the bass harmonic. And that's our third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh harmonic. Seventh and first harmonic, about the same gain. Let's just try to get the sustained tone down first, and then we can try and recreate the transient and things like that. Let's start off with a mutant. Now I want to use phase diff or harmonic. Harmonic would be good. We'll start with the most harmonically dense wave first, and then we'll look at the harmonics using the harmonic mutant here, and count the harmonics. Six, seven. Shh, what the fuck? That's so loud. So since it's about as loud as the fundamental, we'll turn the depth to about 50, or the dry wet to about 50%. Maybe if we use a second harmonic here. Actually, let's first start with the filter. So right now I'm looking at my DAW to try to look at this EQ in particular to try and match the waveform and oscilloscope to what I'm hearing here. Looks like we have a harmonic here that doesn't exist in the wave type that we're using. I wonder if we go to saw. Okay, now we do have that harmonic. If we go to our filter here, we have our second one set to kind of cut out those harmonics that we don't have on here, we can kind of get a similar sound. Now, I want to change this second one to phase diff. And I want to use this second filter and morph it to get a kind of a dip here. Then I want to take this filter and I want to make this one key track. This is a little tricky. Maybe we add a sine wave. Yeah, let's just do a sine wave and then we can put, let's put oscillator sync on it. And then let's turn down the mixer for this one. And then by using the oscillator sync here. Now there's some like randomness to the phase here. So let's add a little bit of noise to the depth of the phase diff here. We can do that by going to one of our oscillators and then let's do noise. And then we go to mod matrix and assign LFO3 to mutant two, depth. to something like that. Or we can actually do sample and hold and then smooth it out. And then if we go to here, we can add some noise into it. Okay, so now we have like our general tone kind of down. So now we just need to get kind of what the transient looks like and we gotta get body and kind of like what the randomness throughout the note sounds like. So if I zoom in on this in the audio editor, we can see that right here, if we look at this waveform, we can see that there's probably an increase here, a very short attack. And let's do this with the envelope. We have a very short attack and then we have a very short but a little bit longer than the, the decay or a little bit longer than the attack that goes into a sustain. And if we map that, and then now what we can do is just put randomness on a bunch of different things to kind of get that feeling of uh, lifeness into the sound. We have our LFO3, which is essentially a random LFO. And if we put it on the depth of different mutants, we can get variation in the harmonics. Let's just see how many different LFOs we can put on things. I definitely want some of that higher end, like, screwery, you know? I want, like, the high end to kind of phase with itself. Uh, and I'm wondering if I can do that by going in 
to the pre-effect and using some type of flanger. And we'll put it in mono. And then we also have like a third envelope that kind of comes in and then drops off. And it kind of binds itself to the pitch. So if we change that to assign LFO or envelope three to all oscillator pitch by just a tiny bit. There's more phasing going on in the top end that not, we're not really getting. I wonder if we can use some type of delay. And then let's add a little bit of variation using another LFO and we'll use the same method to just add variation to the pitch. Put this maybe at like seven and then we go to LFO four. Oh shit, our wave type sample and hold. And then we can go back to our LFO here. I wonder if we sign envelope three to do a negative depth on the ring noise. And then also, since we have the ability to do poly aftertouch, I think, I mean, we should take advantage of it. All right, if we go to the mixer and then put velocity or poly aftertouch, let's do poly aftertouch or mono aftertouch in this case, no poly aftertouch, and we'll put it on to the mixer, and then we'll put it on ring volume. And then we'll bring the ring volume down. And then maybe we can also have poly after touch go on to the uh, filter cutoff. And since poly after touch is going to the filter, we can also put poly after touch onto the pitch of the oscillators because as more air is being blown in, the higher the pitch will get. We'll have velocity on the attack so that way the faster you press down, the sharper the attack is. Envelope one and envelope two attack will make it negative, so that means the harder you press, the shorter the attack. Uh, and we'll put it at like maybe negative 30. Sometimes I like to live, leave a little bit of a uh, randomness in the numbers here because it, not everything's ever going to be perfect in real life. And then also we want to do that to envelope three. Look at some saxophone performances, because I feel like that would give us a good idea of what we should be going for. By the way, I don't know shit about saxophones. I don't even know if I've seen a saxophone in real life. All right, I think we have something that I'm willing to say sounds somewhat similar to a saxophone. I don't want to say that it sounds like a saxophone because I don't know that to be true and I also don't think it is. Here is the fun part where we get to screw around with the patch and make something sound completely different than its original sound. I wonder what happens if we put a uh, formant filter on here. Yeah, I don't know what the sound is, but you get the point. You can really screw around with things and just like make sounds. That is the that is the entire uh, encapsulation of sound design. You basically make sounds. I think I'm gonna call the video here. Thank you for watching and tuning through my struggle to make something even remotely close to a sax to a saxophone. I don't know what to say. It's it's difficult. Leave a like. I love you all. How long has my monitor been?